Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to Barnes and Nobles. So it's 9.07 right now. I usually really like to come to Barnes super early because I like to be the first one there in case I'm doing a video or I'm tagging you guys along. Um, and I'm super excited. A couple things. <laughs> One, I have to go in there and return a book uh, because I already have a copy of it and the hubby got it for me for Valentine's Day, so I have to do that. Two, I'm gonna look into their yearly perks and benefits with the membership because I plan on at least making one trip to Barnes once a month, every month. And three, I have no plan. So this could either go both ways. I could either spend a lot of money because I have no plan and be all over the place or I come out with one book or no books so we will see but I plan on taking my time here um, I don't have a kiddo with me so I plan on taking my time and let's go I'm so excited
Okay, so I did good. I bought four books. I had a gift card and I had to return a book. So I literally just spent $5 out of my own pocket with these four books. Like Barnes and Nobles, I love to go there, but I am always hesitant because it's so expensive and like no offense to Barnes and Nobles, like I feel like most of the time I can find or every single time I can find these books on Amazon for a lot less money. <laughs> So like coming to Barnes is fun because I like to browse around and take my time. I always treat it like a treat because it's very expensive and it can get really expensive. So I didn't join their members reward program because they're going to come up with a new one in June and it has better perks. They're going to cancel the one that they have now. So I'm going to do that. I don't know guys, like I was super excited to come to Barnes this morning and when I went there with no plan, like I literally was all over the place. I ended up getting four romances, which is fine. These are books that I've been wanting anyways that have been on my list. But for some reason, I wasn't excited to go book shopping today. And I love book shopping. Like, it makes me so freaking happy to go browse and look for books. Even if I don't even buy any, it makes me happy. But I was just not feeling it today. I don't know why. Let's go home and I'm going to share with you what I got. Last trip to Barnes & Nobles, I did not get any romance books, but this trip, it was all about the romance. So the very first book I got was Losing Hope by Colleen Hoover. Had to get a Colleen Hoover book in here. I mean, come on, she is the queen of romance. I had to get one. And this is actually the second book in a mini series that she has. The first book is Hopeless. And this is about a young couple. I think that they're in high school and they have this passionate, romance together. So I kind of want to go into this blindly. I heard nothing but great things about it. But what captivated me is a little blurb in the back that says, the spellbinding story of two young people with devastating pasts who embark on a passionate, intriguing journey to discover the lessons of life, love, and trust, and above all, the healing power that only truth can bring. Would you rather know a truth that makes you feel hopeless or keep believing the lies? I heard nothing but great things, so I'm very excited. So this is part two of that. And this one says, sometimes in life, in order to move forward, you must face the past. So I know that there's a little novella in between these. And there's a book where you get the guy's point of view. Uh, so I decided to just buy the second one for now because I haven't even read the first one. So there's that. Next up is 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. Now, this is the same author that wrote The Hating Game. And I included that book in my top 10 favorite romance books of all time. I'll link that video below just so that you can check it out. That book I absolutely love. So this would be my second Sally Thorne book. And I just can't wait to read this one. So this story follows Darcy and Tom. And Darcy is a photographer. And she has a twin brother named Jamie who happens to be best friends with Tom. She thinks Tom is a very gorgeous man. And knows that he's off limits because it is her brother's best friend. So... When she inherits a fixer-upper cottage, she soon realizes that the person that's going to help her fix up this cottage is no other than Tom. And so they are forced to work together. And this is all I know about this story. I can't wait to read it. I love Sally Thorne. I love her writing. It's so easy to get through. And I hope I love this book as much as I love The Hating Game, which I doubt it, but I hope I do. I haven't heard much about this book. I don't know if it's because people don't really like it or if it's not that popular, but overall I'm really excited to read it. Next up is Icebreaker by Hannah Grace and I'm not really into hockey romances, but I've heard nothing but great things about this book and this is actually a reverse romance, meaning usually the guy is the grumpy one, but in this case the girl is the grumpy one and the guy is the golden retriever, can't do nothing wrong, perfect characters. So this story follows Nate and Anastasia. She's obviously an ice skater. And he's the team captain of his hockey team and so it's their romance. I can't wait to read about it and I'm excited. And then the last book that I got is Shipped by Angie Hockman and I'm really excited about this book because on the back it says the unhoneymooners meets the hating game in this clever romantic comedy following a market manager who is forced to go on a cruise with her arch nemesis when they're up for the same promotion. So it's kind of literally like the hating game and I freaking love the hating game. I haven't read the unhoneymooners. Have it on my shelf. I have it to read it this summer because I know I'm gonna be in the summery mood. I love the hating game. So if this is compared to the hating game, I am excited to read it. So this story follows Henley and Jeremy who obviously hate each other at work and are up for the same promotion. 
and they're probably competing towards each other and they are also forced to go on a cruise. What better enemies to lovers than workforce, than forced proximity because they have to work in the same environment and they're competing for the same promotion. Like I am so excited. I love all those tropes. So I'm super excited to read this book. I'm probably actually gonna read this book sooner than later because even though it's not summer, I'm kind of in a mood to read An Enemy to Lovers that takes place in the work field. I think it's so fun. And it's also forbidden too sometimes. So that's also very fun. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.